Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be putting together a simple script for adding a tag check to an XR socket. This was a project that I was going to be sharing a while back and just decided to make a quick video about it since I think a lot of people may find this useful. And this is a valuable thing to be able to do because with typical XR sockets, they're just going to grab onto any grabbable object within your scene. Sometimes you want your sockets to only be able to grab onto specific objects that have a tag or an enum, some type of identifier. And this is actually really simple to do. So we're going to be going through a simple tag example, and then I'll be quickly showing another enum example for some more intermediate or industrious users. So at this point, I'm going to assume you already have a project open, and obviously we're going to first need to create a script. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new script, and I'm just going to call this, I'll call it socket with tag check. And then we'll just open it up. Now that we're in Visual Studio, well, the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure we're using all the proper namespaces. This is usually the first thing you need to do when you're writing code for XR Toolkit. So let's go to our namespaces and let's type in XR or using Unity Engine XR Interaction Toolkit. And this is going to give us access to all of those great types and things like that so we can access their functionality. And if we go down to our class, the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that our script is inheriting from the XR socket interactor. So let's do that really quick. And we're doing that because we want this script to essentially be a socket interactor. This effectively lets us add additional functionality without needing to rewrite the entire script or something like that. And luckily for us, Unity has created some functions that we can easily add on to. And we're specifically going to be working with the can select and can hover functions. And I'll talk a little bit about those once we write them out. But like I said, we're going to have a tag check. And the most straightforward way of doing this is just having a public string that you can change in the inspector. So we'll do that. So we'll create a public string and we'll just call this target tag and we'll initialize it to string.empty because it naturally, we just want to make sure that there's nothing in it. We're also not going to need either of these functions. So let's go ahead and delete those as well. Now, like I kind of mentioned with some of the functionality that we can add on to that XR Toolkit gives us, C Sharp in general also gives us some functionality for doing that. And that's using the override keyword. So if we write public override, you can already see that Visual Studio is going to give us some autocomplete and it's going to give us that can hover and can select that I just talked about. So let's put in our can hover here and then we'll do our can select as well. And then we'll talk a little bit more about their specifics. So you'll notice here for each of these functions, they both return a Boolean value. And this is because the interaction manager is actually going to be checking each of these functions as it's going through all of your interactables in your scene to see if your interactors or your hands can hover or select the objects that you're trying to interact with. And we can actually take a look at that code. So give me just a second and I'll pull that up. And as you can see, here we are within the XR interaction manager where we have a couple of functions here. We have interactor select valid targets and interactor hover valid targets, where it's going to call that interactor can select and that interactor can hover. So this is just going to be a quick check that the interaction manager does to see if it can indeed hover and select the object that it's trying to. What this lets us do, since we can override it, we can add our own custom functionality to enable or disable this process from happening based on our own functionality. So this is where we're going to be adding in our tag check or enum check back in the script that we just created. But as you can see here, we haven't added any code yet, but it's already returning this base can hover. And you may be wondering, well, what is that? What's it? What's the code that this actually is? Well, this is going to be the code within the XR base interactor where it's actually going to check to see if it's on the proper interaction layer. So any functionality that's going to be coming from either the XR socket interactor script itself or any of the scripts that it inherits from, it's what's going to be factored within this base call here. Now that may seem or sound a little bit nebulous, but we can actually look at that as well. So here we are within the XR base interactor and you can see that we have this can hover function as well as this can select function. And you'll see that both of these, what both of these do is that it handles both this Boolean for allowing selection or hovering, but it also calls the function if it's on a valid interactable layer mask. So anytime within our XR socket script that we just created, when that base call is done, it's also going to be running this functionality here to see, hey, is the Boolean that's in that script that I'm inheriting from, is that the proper value? And is it on a proper layer mask to be interacted with? 
And as you can imagine, if you wanted to forego this entirely, we wouldn't even need to make that base call in the first place. But the majority of the time, if not all the time, you want to be making those base calls, or things are just going to act weird or they're not going to work properly. So now that we have a general idea of what this object that we're creating is, and all the functionality that is supporting it, let's add on to it. So let's create a new function here. So I'm going to make a private function, then I'm going to return a boolean value, so it's going to return a, return a true or a false value. And I'm just going to call it match using tag where it's going to accept one argument and it's going to be of type XR base interactable. Because naturally we're going to need a reference to something to actually check its tag. And this is an incredibly easy function. We're going to use the return keyword. We're going to access the interactable that we're passing in here. And we're just going to use this nifty function that unity gives us called compare tag, where we just input a string and we'll just pass in our target tag value. And you'll see if we hover over it, it returns a Boolean value. So what we can now do is if we go up to our can hover and can select, we can use the double ampersand and call match using tag and pass in the interactable that we're getting from the can hover and can select. So anytime that interaction manager is passing in an interactable to this interactor to see, hey, can you actually interact with this thing? We're going to be adding this additional tag check to it. And we're going to be doing it for both our can hover as well as our can select. And that's pretty much it. And then if you're crazy and weird like me, you'll remove the namespaces that you're no longer using. Now let's go back into our scene and let's set this up really quick. And now that we're back in Unity in my hierarchy, I already have this simple game object set up where I have the sphere collider and it's already marked as a trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my socket with tad check script onto it and we'll see what we get. And you'll notice even though I made that tag string public, I'm actually not seeing it in my inspector. And this is partially with a more recent update to XR Toolkit for needing custom inspectors for when you're inheriting from interactables and interactors. And there's actually some decent documentation on that. So let's look at that really quick. Where you'll see is that we're in XR Interaction Toolkit 1.0.3.2, where in this example here, you'll see that we essentially just did this, where we've created a interactor, specifically not an interactable, but we've added some sort of public field. And to get it to show up properly, we're going to need to create a simple inspector for it. Which may sound a little bit more daunting than it really is, so don't worry about it, we're going to make one right now. So let's go back into Unity so we can do that. Now when we're dealing with any code that deals with Unity's editor, we're going to need to create a Unity editor folder. Or just an editor folder. So we just need to create a folder and make sure that you name it editor. If you don't, it's none of this is going to work. Or it'll work, but when you go to build your project, you're going to get some errors and we'll create a new script within this folder. Then we'll just call socket with tag editor. And if you remember when we created our initial script, we added the XR interaction toolkit namespace. For this one, we want to make sure that we're adding the Unity editor XR interaction toolkit namespace. But we'll also first need to add the Unity editor. So let's do that. And then we'll go using Unity Editor XR Interaction Toolkit. And this will give us access to all of the custom editors that have already been created for us. And kind of like before, we're going to be inheriting and then just simply adding on to it. So we'll get rid of our mono behavior. And I honestly don't know if there's an XR Socket Editor. Yes, XR Socket Interactor Editor that we can inherit from. And then we're going to be kind of doing what we did previously, where we're going to be overriding functions that are already been created and adding our own functionality. But we don't need either of these functions, so let's delete those. We will, however, need a serialized property um, to actually get the value from our script that we created. So we'll create a private serialized property that we'll just call target tag again. And then we're going to want to create a private override on enable to set that up. So we'll write protected override void on enable. And like we saw before, we are going to be calling the base functionality. But now we just want to get the information from that script that we created. So we'll write target tag. We'll do serialized object, find property. And then we'll just write the target tag name in there. 
Now, don't worry about this too much. Um, I'll try and link some resources in the description if you're unfamiliar with writing custom editors. This is just kind of an extra thing that we're needing to do. But now that we actually got the information from our object, we need to display it. So we're going to be writing another protected override void. And we're going to write draw properties, which this is a function that we can override to again add on to. So this is going to be displaying all of the information from all the scripts that we're inheriting from. But all we're going to need to do now is display it. So we'll write editor, GUI layouts, property field, and we'll just put in our target tag. And that's actually it. But make sure to get rid of these namespaces if you're crazy like me. There we go. Now hopefully I remember the name of this correctly because if I didn't, it's not going to work. So let's go back into Unity so, to see if this fixed it. So now that we're back in Unity, let's go to our tag socket. And you'll notice, or what I'm noticing, is our field is still not there. And I've realized that I've missed out on one pivotal thing. So let's add that, let's add that really quick. Now, whenever you're making a custom inspector or editor or anything like that, you need to designate what, uh, what kind of script or whatever class it's for. So we need to add a little decorator here that will say custom editor type of. And we're just going to add in our socket with tag check here. So now anytime we're drawing something in the inspector of type socket with tag check, we're going to be making sure we're drawing it using this functionality. So make sure we'll save and now let's check that again. So we'll select our customs tag socket again and you'll see we have our target tag now. Now all you need to do is write whatever string you want here for whatever tag you want this socket to interact with. So if I go to the pink cube here or the gray cube, you'll see that it's tagged as cube. So obviously, whenever we try and slot the pink cube into it, it's not going to work, but the gray cube will if we put in the cube tag. So let's do that really quick. Go to our target tag and we'll just write cube. All right, and that's pretty much it for all of our setup and everything. Let's actually test this out. And it looks like that everything is working correctly. As you can see, our socket will not pick up the pink cube because it doesn't have the proper tag, but will pick up the gray cube because we've marked it with that cube tag that it's checking for. So I think that about does it for me in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you want to see the enum portion of this, because I think this went a little bit longer than I expected, or see more videos like this, or maybe some other small examples of code that you would like to see, feel free to leave a comment below. So that's it for me. Thanks again. I'll see you all in the next one.